one of the latest developments that we haven't talked a lot about yet, this, these revelations from Twitter that Elon Musk was being investigated by federal authorities over his acquisition conduct, if you will. What do you make of this? Yeah, I, I mean, it's difficult to say because we don't know which federal agency was investigating him. I think it's a little premature to think there's much fire there um, because this could be as simple as Twitter's lawyers trying to get their hands on the on the information that Elon shared with the SEC. We know that he was contacted by the SEC as a related to this deal. And so it might just have been something that they put in the filing to get information about that. So without actually finding out what kind of investigation was involved. It's a little premature to say, oh, there's something super nutty going on here. That being said, you can never really discount the super nutty in this particular story. So what's your hunch? Does a deal happen by October 28th? And are there more surprises between now and then? I think it's, again, I would never rule out more surprises. I, I believe a deal happens. I just don't have a ton of high conviction about it. Um, I think what's likely happening now is that the lawyers from both sides are trying to figure out how to execute this deal uh, in, in between two parties that have absolutely no reason to trust one another. And so it's how do we get all of the money in one place and you show us that you have all the money and then we quickly take all the money and you get the Twitter uh, without, you know, without involving a lot of other contingencies, uh, which Twitter is just not going to accept at this point. So say Elon Musk gets the Twitter and it happens in a couple of weeks. What do you think happens to Twitter under Elon Musk? And, and what's the biggest risk? I think the biggest risks are sort of twofold. One is I think there's going to be a lot of brain drain. I think a lot of people are going to either leave of their own volition or uh, or be fired. And we'll get into why I think that's a, a problem for the company and the world. And then the other is I think Twitter is just going to be subject to the kind of reactive decision making that Elon has shown both publicly in his comments about the company and now privately in what we've seen from the tax uh, to be someone who's just you know, doesn't respond well to pushback or criticism, likes to be praised, uh, likes to be given, uh, at, you know, accolades about, um, you know, how smart he is and, and, and what great ideas he could bring forward. And but despite all of that, just still does not have a serious plan for what to do with the for what to do with the platform. And I think that puts the company in a dangerous place. And I think it puts its users in a dangerous place. OK, uh, here here's a similar question another way. What's one thing that Musk could do that would make Twitter better? And do you think he'll do it? I think, oh, the easiest thing that he could do to make it better is to immediately remove himself from the decision making involved in it. Like if he if he somehow moved the company into some kind of foundation and said this is going to be run in a nonprofit way, you know, actually, you know, Jack and I don't agree on a lot of things, but Jack has this notion about, you know, Twitter returning to be a protocol and, you know, this this notion that uh, it needs to be just one client running on top of a technical protocol. If, if Elon were to kind of divest himself of the authority and decision making power around on the platform, that would be one positive thing he could do, and then just leave it to actual subject matter experts to evolve the technology needed to do that. So I've been dying to know what your thoughts are on the text exchanges between Musk and Jack. You know, what was your big takeaway? I mean, of course, you had this hunch all along that they were somehow in cahoots. Yeah, I mean, I think it was pretty obvious from the proxy filing that Jack had had a conversation with Elon in which he expressed his own opinion that it would be better in independent hands. We find out from the text the text that Jack, when Elon agrees to do this, that Jack is overcome with emotion that he would then say later publicly is, you know, the singular solution to Twitter's problems has shown up. You know, he, was, he just couldn't believe that this, you know, Messiah had arrived uh, to save Twitter from this board that Jack had both put together as his, during his 10 years running the company, but now simply couldn't stand to be in business with, with anymore. And so the, the, the text reveals someone, you know, and Jack, who is just frustrated and pretty much done running the company, and then willing to completely throw under the bus anyone at the company, including Prague, the CEO, uh, who got in the way of Elon coming in to take it over, despite the fact that Elon at no point to Jack, either in private or in public, expressed any real idea of what he wanted to do with it. Certainly nothing that was in line with what Jack thought needed to happen, this idea of making it a protocol. That's nothing that Elon has picked up at all. Uh, so I think the text just revealed, not only from Jack, but in general, just how uh, you know how willing people are to uh, appease Elon, and that anyone who pushes back on him uh, immediately gets you know pushed to the side. We have a 
haven't heard from the other Twitter founders, Ev Williams and Biz Stone. I, you know, I know you're close with them, and I'm, I'm. What do they think about this to the extent that you can share? Yeah, I, I, I prefer to just sort of speak for myself. I, I am close with the other, the founders and a number of other early employees. Um, but I, you know, I think for for all of us that were there in the early time of the company, you know, we've uh, we've always had self inflicted wounds. Uh, we've always had, you know, periods of turmoil with the company. I think despite differences in terms of like, oh, you know, I didn't think Jack should be CEO. And then Jack didn't think that Ev should be CEO. And that was a big rift in the company. I never really doubted, for example, Jack's willingness to do what was necessary to make Twitter a better product, or nor did I doubt that he had true conviction and passion about how Twitter should grow into the world. What we're seeing now, though, is just someone who who doesn't have that kind of expertise. We're seeing instead someone who's been told by everyone who's blowing up his text messages in the world writ, writ large that he's the second coming of Thomas Edison. He's a genius who can enter any problem, and despite a lack of subject ma matter expertise, he's going to be able to um, fix these very difficult problems. And that's dangerous. That's dangerous for the geopolitical reasons that you talked about at the top of the show, that you're talking about someone who is incredibly susceptible to flattery and influence and believes too highly in his own abilities. And that's going to create the context for a large mistake to happen, whether that's, you know, shutting off access uh, in Ukraine, or that's uh, inadvertently or purposely revealing user data to uh, an authoritarian state that's trying to get information uh, about dissidents uh, who are coordinating on Twitter. Remember, Twitter's never really had a problem with China because Twitter doesn't exist in China. But Elon exists in China. Tesla exists in China. So now China has an incredibly strong lever over Elon in order to jeopardize user safety and, and, and jeopardize dissidents in Hong Kong or Taiwan or wherever else. That's a real problem. Uh, and it doesn't require it doesn't require a secret, you know, conversation between Elon and Putin. It's just obvious on his face that he's going to be susceptible to these kind of pressures. Quickly, how concerned are you about this all happening right before a midterm election? You know, especially given your time with the Obama administration. I'm not too concerned about I'm not too concerned about the midterms. I think it's you know too close to the to the midterms to be a problem. I think for future election cycles, not just domestically about uh, but around the world, I think it is a concern because not so much for putting the thumb on the on the scale for a particular political party. And I I don't think Trump should be on Twitter, but I also kind of discount how important that is. Uh, I think it's more the, a problem that around the world we know, as you know, the Washington Report, Washington Post said that autocrats already use the platforms to spread lies about opponents and whip up violence and mayhem, and that's a problem because Elon's going to be able uh, to tip the scales for those kind of forces around the world.